Well, thank you to Judge Sylvia Hines, Radix, other distinguished members of the judiciary, to Senator Schumer, to my distinguished colleagues in the United States Congress, Congressman uh, Nadler, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, Congressman uh, Ed Towns, uh, to our borough president who just joined us, Marty Markowitz, <laughs> our county leader, Frank Sedio, to my good friend, our wonderful uh, moderator, Assemblyman Kareem Kamara, <laughs> to my successor, Walter T. Mosley III, the new Assemblyman from the 57th Assembly District. To all of my distinguished colleagues in government who were too numerous to mention, but all of whom have served with great distinction. Uh, to the spiritual leaders who are here, members of the clergy, to my pastor, uh, Pastor Lawrence Aker, the Cornerstone Baptist Church. To the distinguished leaders of New York City uh, who are here, Christine Quinn, the city council speaker, John Liu, the controller, Bill de Blasio, the public advocate. We're thankful for you, our former controller, Bill Thompson. It's an honor and a privilege to have this opportunity to stand before you right now as a member of the United States Congress. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this opportunity. And of course, I want to start by thanking my family. Kenny Sandra, Jeremiah, Joshua, my mom, my dad, the entire Jeffries clan and the Cephas clan and the Gidry clan. We're thankful for your love and for your support and for your patience. You know, politics can be a rough and, and tumble business. And it's particularly rough when your husband or your father or your son or your relative is involved. And so for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that they were with me every step of the way. And I know I wouldn't be at this point without them. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. I'm also, of course, thankful for our wonderful campaign team, led by my campaign manager extraordinaire, Lauren Behrman, my director of communications, Lupe Todd, my fundraiser, Kathy Torrin, the entire campaign team that did a tremendous job. Thankful to my consultants, the advanced group, George Arts Communications, Thankful, of course, to the heart and soul of the campaign, our volunteers, hundreds of them who labored in the vineyards of the community getting our message out. Thankful to the donors. Thankful to the spiritual leaders from across the borough and from across the city who prayed for me, who gave me guidance and advice. You know, I feel particularly privileged today that was able to get a, a Jewish blessing, a Muslim blessing, and a Christian blessing. You know, I feel exponentially blessed. And I'm down there with John Boehner and Paul Ryan. I need all the blessings that I can get. And so I'm thankful. And of course, I'm thankful for all of the institutional support that we receive, the Working Families Party, Organized Labor, Progressive Association for Political Action, the Vanguard Independent Democratic Association, the Thomas Jefferson Club, the Shorefront Democrats, Lambda Independent Democrats, South Queens Democratic Club. Man, we had a lot of support. I'm thankful for your efforts, and of course, above all else, I'm thankful to the community for giving me the opportunity to serve you down in Washington. And for the last couple of weeks, 
I've been trying to do everything that I can, as I, as I promised during the campaign, to make it clear to the whole country that Brooklyn's in the house. Now, I'm not going to forget about Southwest Queens, but I've been trying to make it clear that we're in the house. In fact, you know, I, I, I've been so excited about the opportunity to finally serve you, the 8th Congressional District. My sister Yvette knows that I've been tempted to go to the floor <laughs> of the House of Representatives, look out at everyone, pause for a moment, and simply say, holla. <laughs> hey, I'm from Brooklyn. But you know, Congressman Towns, I thought about it, and I was a little bit concerned that if I did that, I might hear the voice of Shirley Chisholm. <laughs> Y'all know she was from Brooklyn. She was the first black woman ever elected to the United States Congress. And, and I represent a large part of her district. I was afraid if I did it, I might hear the voice of Shirley Chisholm saying, young man, we sent you down to Washington to stand up. So don't go down there and act up. But I'm certainly looking forward to, to standing up for our community, standing up for the education of our children, standing up for civil rights, standing up for immigration reform, standing up to make sure that our seniors can retire with grace and with dignity, that we protect Medicare, we protect Medicaid, we protect Social Security, and the things that make us great as a nation. It's such an honor and a privilege, as Senator Schumer referenced, to represent such an incredibly diverse district. We've got blacks, we've got whites, and Latinos, and Asians, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, working families, and the well-off, the young, the old, the gay, and the straight. It's a, it's a district that is a microcosm of the gorgeous mosaic of New York City. In fact, there are more than two dozen languages spoken in the 8th Congressional District. Now, I've got to admit, I only speak two. <laughs> English and Brooklynese. <laughs> but you know, I'm also proud of the fact that I represent more Russian-speaking Jewish immigrants than any other member of Congress in the country, so I'm working on my Russian. But the diversity of the district, I think what it says to us is that in the, in the words and the vision of Dr. King, we're coming closer to a place where we can be judged by the content of our character and not simply the color of our skin. We made progress in America, but of course we understand that we still have a long way to go. We got some serious challenges in the nation's capital right now. How do we grow our economy so that we can get people the jobs that they so desperately need? How do we deal with the gun violence problem that's robbing us of our children on the streets of Brooklyn and in Newtown and all across the country in the face of Second Amendment absolutism? How do we reform a broken immigration system to make sure we can create a pathway for citizenship for those who dream to be American? These are some tough questions. The skeptics may say, well, the environment in Washington is a poisonous one right now, riddled with dysfunction, impossible to navigate. But we've known such frustration in the past. Frederick Douglass, in the early 1850s, at a meeting of anti-slavery activists, expressed frustration with the slow pace of the abolitionist movement, and he conveyed his sentiment to the group that he did not believe America would ever be able to deal with the question of slavery. A hush fell over the room. But then Sojourner Truth stood up, and she respectfully disagreed with Frederick Douglass and asked a question 
that she knew the answer to, is God dead? Well, let's just check the historic record books. Exactly 150 years ago, in 1863, this month, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. A hundred years ago, the first minimum wage law in America took effect. Fifty years ago, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a historic multiracial march on Washington. And just a few days ago, Barack Obama was sworn in for the second time as the 44th President of the United States of America. You know we serve a good God. He's alive and he's well. And because of that fact, I can stand here with all the confidence in the world and say to you, we're going to give you the government that you deserve, a government that provides for the poor, works for working families, makes sense for the middle class, stands up for senior citizens, innovates in the inner city, looks out for the left behind, and promotes prosperity for the greatest number of Americans possible. That's my charge. That's my goal. That's my mission. We're not going backward. We're going to keep moving forward. And as long as we stay together, as long as we pray together, as long as we continue to work day and night together, our community will be a better place for everybody. God bless you. God bless the 8th Congressional District.